I have the perfect shirt for today's video. Praise the sun, mother What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going into the questions that you guys asked me on Blue Sky and the community page on YouTube. Sorry, Twitter. I want to know what questions you guys had pertaining to souls, pertaining to souls like anything in that realm. I'm really not using Twitter as much anymore besides for like special announcements or stream updates. But if you guys want to follow me where the sky is blue, you guys can do that down in the description below or you guys can see it on my YouTube homepage. There should be links up in the top right corner. So excited to get into these questions. One of them that you guys asked the community homepage. I just, I, I have to know, are you okay? Are you, did you get a hug today? Are you all right? But it's funny. I will, I will answer it. <laughs> the first one comes from Loco Fox, and he asks, what made you try your first Souls game and how long till you realized you love the style of game? One of my friends commented on a uh, video that I did about Elden Ring and I reviewed the trailer way before it came out, way before the closed beta test even came out. And she said, you need to try Dark Souls 1 Remaster because at that point, uh, before Elder Ring came out, I had never played any any Souls likes, any anything. I think it was 2020 that I started Souls and Souls likes. 2020 or 2021 in the summer, I think it was when I started playing Souls likes. And I remember distinctly not having a great time <laughs> when I first got into Dark Souls 1 Remastered, thinking that it was just like, what, what, what these are terrible controls. I'm dying all the time. Ugh, all the things someone who hasn't gotten good yet would say. I got to the point where I fought Smo and Ornstein and that, that was my clicking point before that. Yeah, I was getting through bosses and I was doing well and I was surviving, but I didn't really have a clicking point of like, I could do it. I was able and capable of doing it, you know? So once I got to that point, and especially when I got past Artorius, that, it was game changing for me. Like I realized I love the style of game when I got past Artorius and I got to experience his boss battle. Absolutely loved it. Next question comes from one of my good friends, Mando. Mando, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for the question. He asks, with all the Souls-like games, why was Sekiro Shadows Die twice? Uh, why did it feel so refreshing and different? While many Souls-like games have block, parry, roll, Sekiro felt so forwarding in terms of facing your opponent head on. <laughs> it felt refreshing because it's not Souls-like. Sekiro, in mine and other Souls-like creators' um, opinion, is it, it's not a Souls-like. It's just, it's completely different from a Souls-like. While yes, you have the mechanic of dying a lot and being respawned at areas and the health and everything like that, the way that you have the upgrading system of your um, your abilities, you have an ability tree, which you don't have that at all whatsoever in a Souls game or a Souls-like. And in Souls-likes, you don't have a defined character story. In Sekiro, that's what you have. You have a character that has already been defined for you, a character whose story you're already going through. In a Souls or Souls-like, you know, you're playing in Bloodborne as the Hunter. Or Dark Souls 2, I believe you're playing as the Chosen Undead. You know, you're, you're, you're playing as a very vague character that doesn't already have a pre-built storyline. Plus, the system of deflection and dodges is completely different than any Souls or Souls-like game. If you try to play like you would in Sekiro in Dark Souls, it won't go well. <laughs> it won't end well at all. And that's why also the reasons, the biggest reason I think why it's so refreshing is because it puts you into that headspace of where you have no choice but to get good. You have no choice but to take something head on. You don't have co-op. You don't have any of these other things that Souls likes or Souls games have. You just have yourself the weapon and the things that you've accumulated throughout the game that provide you with, you know, your weapon a little extra oomph or your abilities, whatever it may be. Going through and facing all of the different bosses that were in Sekiro was so, it felt so immediate. It felt so kind of like, okay, you're about to take on this boss. How do you want to prepare for this? I feel like that is the most important thing to remember in Sekiro is that if you prepare well, you will do well. You have to understand the moveset. You have to understand how the character's weaknesses can benefit you in terms of how you defeat the character and how you defeat the enemy. And another question comes from Local Fox, and he asks if you could add one feature or remove one feature of Souls games, what would that be? Ooh, oh my gosh. Well, this feature was already tested actually in uh, Dark Souls 2, where they had enemies die, and I, I know, I'm going to sound like a bit of a masochist when I say that, but it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like a Souls game whenever the enemies died after a certain amount of times killing them. So I don't know, if I were to remove 
one feature. I think I would add something more in terms of accessibility than anything, not necessarily a feature, because I feel like as someone who has kind of weird eyesight to a degree, I can't stand very bright areas. I want to be able to have the ability to tone down brighter areas within a Souls game or Souls-like. So let's say, for example, you have that point in Elden Ring where you're going to fight, um, oh my god, you're going to fight uh, uh, Radagon. And you get to that, like you're entering in the gate and the screen goes entirely white. And it's just, it is an eyesore. <laughs> it, is, it is an absolute eyesore to have to deal with that. So I, I feel like we should have the option in order to have like going into a dimmer screen or turning that off entirely. Or, or, or and here's another one, bigger text. I know these are accessibility features, um, but they're still features nonetheless. Um, I want to make the text font bigger. And I know that you can't do that in a Souls or Souls-like. Um, so especially in Elder Ring, I say again, because the, the text and font size and the lack of like, um, shat, like backing shadow to the text is just abhorrent. So I want to be able, I would love for that to be a feature within Souls and Souls-like games. I wouldn't want to take anything away because Souls and Souls-like have their own unique beauty to them. So I wouldn't want to take that away, but I would want to add the feature you know, be it accessibility for people who don't like intensive bright lights or that backdrop to the text. And the next question comes from Scorpio Caesar. I hope you're doing well, dude. And he asks, what's your favorite dragon slash ver wern? Ver wern? No, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, am I? It's the same with placenta sacks, okay? <laughs> what is your favorite dragon slash? I'm going to go with vern. Wern. Vern. Vern. Vern is the W silence. Someone please tell me. <laughs> what is your favorite one of those from any of the games and why? Okay, so I have a favorite dragon and oh gosh, it's between Placenta Sax and um Ah, why am I forgetting his name? It's an iconic dragon in, in Elden Ring. Why am I forgetting his name? Oh my god, that is that that is a cardinal sin that I'm forgetting his name. Why did I want to call him Aragon for the moment? <laughs> first name that came to my mind. Why did I want to call him Aragon? <laughs> this isn't Lord of the Rings. Bail. Bail. That was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. Placida Sax is just so good at the story and the lore. Ugh. Okay. Um, but I also love Forda Sax. Forda Sax is just it. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Beautiful. Um, I'm gonna go with Placida Sax. Placida Sax because of the story, the whole aesthetic and look of the dragon, it's just absolutely breathtaking. And the continuation of the story, whenever you see like the the uh, Placida Sax's heads just chopping down on Bale and you see that residual in that boss battle, it's just, it's fantastic. So yes, 100% Placida Sax. This next question comes from Xavier. What makes us come back for more? Are we masochists? Don't actually answer that joke, but it makes you think, and you know, what you know what i'm answering it anyway because it's good okay what makes us come back for more i think it's kind of like the persistence of trying to get through a challenge and a stubborn nature that we all have in us i am so stubborn like i i one night when i was trying to get one boss i think it was artorius actually because i didn't stream me beating him i i like did practice streams and trying to get him um but i distinctly remember not going to sleep one night because i was like fuck it, I am going to get Artorias right now. I always joke around and say, you know, being a Souls player is like being a masochist, but it is kind of true, actually. I think it's both psychologically, we want the challenge and we strive to be able to prove to ourselves something, but also we, there's a little bit of masochism in, in us, just a little bit. This next question is from Lily asking, do I have a skill issue if I can't finish a single Souls game? Okay. I expect every single able-bodied person out there to finish a Souls game. I've said that once and I will say it again. So if you are an able-bodied person with all of the accoutrements and all of your fingies are intact, you have your toes, you have all of your movements and you're able to move your hands and mash buttons and do the correct stuff, I, well, yeah, I expect you to be able to finish a Souls game, no problem. When this person asks, do I have a skill issue if I can't finish a single Souls game? I would not call it a skill issue. Okay, I would call it an issue of persistence and patience. 
and wanting to do it. Maybe you don't want to finish or do it because you'll think you'll fail again, you know? So, I mean, yeah, we joke around and we say, oh, skill issue and everything. But, you know, it's it's more or less a persistence and um, a, a wanting to do the thing because you think you're going to fail at it. I don't know your play style, but, you know, just keep practicing, keep improving, keep leveling up your character and know that it's not a skill issue that you're not getting to where you want to be with a Souls game. It's the lack of persistence and patience within yourself and for the game. But we say skill issue, we say get good, we say all these different things, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a term of endearment a lot of the time. It's not supposed to be, you know, um, a way to pick on people or a way to be rude or mean. You know, I know we see these terms thrown around a lot. I know a lot of souls and souls like creators like myself we use them and everything but we we mean it in a kind of like a big brother big sister endearing way like you know get good scrub like you know you got this you can do this kind of thing like oh you know it's a fucking skill issue <laughs> like we we don't mean it in a bad way but i want to explain it in a way that is empathetic to what the person is going through because if you ask me a question like this and i just tell you like oh yeah the fucking skill issue like that doesn't help at all whatsoever it's not going to get you to where you need to be and it's not going to give someone an answer that they're actually looking for you know what i mean i will however do that to a random person online who's trying to be snarky with me and they say oh you're why why are you finishing all these souls games why can't i finish a souls game i will reply back to them it's a skill issue get good bro but if someone's Asking a nice question like this, I'm not just going to tell them it's a skill issue. I'm going to give them an actual answer. <laughs> hey, I know that icon. Next up, we have a question from Bradley McFadden who asks, without bonfires and recovery upon death, what other mechanics would a game need to be considered a Souls-like? I love this question. Now, before I go into fully answering this question, I am going to preface it by saying that just because a game is difficult does not make it a Souls-like. Now, keep in mind, again, this is an opinion. I know others will have other, you know, you know opinions on how a souls like is supposed to be but this is mine first off there has to be a lot of stamina based combat so that when you are kind of like in neo i mean neo is actually a really good example of a good souls like uh, where the combat you are losing stamina if you're running you're losing stamina if you are exerting yourself in any way shape or form you are losing stamina there has to be some sort of interconnected level design i know that lords of the fallen and lies of p did that beautifully there also needs to be some sort of soul retrieval mechanic of where you are retrieving lost souls or whatever um, the thing is in place of what the souls are you cannot retrieve them if you die again so let's say for example you are there you die oh you didn't retrieve your souls sorry you don't get to if you die all over again there has to be a vague yet intriguing story that guides the player there has to be some level of replayability and there also has to be characters that give the player something to go off of it's vague and you have to search for it but you have those npcs that are really worth going out of your way for next up i am so happy that this person put a question in for the q a gernico thank you so much for getting involved with this i so appreciate you he asks who was responsible for bringing the tarnished back and what was their true intentions for doing so? So to answer the first part of the question, I think that the Elden Beast beckoned everyone back. I think that, I mean, throughout playing the game and throughout seeing a lot of the lore, it's very much clear that the Elden Beast is responsible for the way everything is. Even though Queen Marika you know, committed the shattering and <laughs> she broke the Elden Ring. I feel like the Elden Beast had to kind of go and clean up her mess and be like, no, we we want everyone here. We want to have everyone included in the, you know, in the chance to become Elden Lord. And I'm speculating right now. I'd have to go over some of the lore bits and everything that I've written down, but I truly think that that could actually be a possibility because I believe I, I spoke about it briefly in uh, one of my theory crafting videos uh, where we have the greater will, we have the two fingers, and we have the Elden Beast. The Elden Beast is basically creation. It is the universe. It is the cosmos. The greater will is supposed to guide uh, Tarnish. It's supposed to guide demigods. <laughs> you have creation kind of bringing its children back. I don't want to use the word children, but for lack of a better term, we're going to say children. A lot of lore, for the second part of the question, a lot of lore suggests that 
the reason I'm bringing the Tarnished back is to restore the Golden Order. That's my guesstimate. I am I would have to go way further into the lore to give like a proper lore video. This is actually a great idea for a lore video. A lore slash theory crafting video, if you will. I think it's an absolutely wonderful topic to dive more so into. The next question comes from Dark by 80 asking, what are your top five souls and souls like games okay so uh i would have to say first one is bloodborne i absolutely love bloodborne uh next one is dark souls one remastered lords of the fallen oh gosh there are so many good ones um and lies of p lies of p really mastered the craft very very well of doing a proper souls like there are many others that I absolutely love, but those are my top five. So now we're going to get into the community questions that were asked on my YouTube channel. I don't even know if I should be answering this one because it's just, it's it's awkward, it's weird, but I, you know, okay, we, we need a good laugh. Would, would you date Miyazaki? No. No offense, the guy's too old for me. He's 50 years old. The last question is from CS Sword asking, what's more important to you in a Souls and Souls like combat or exploration? What are, uh, what, why are, <laughs> I can't talk. Why are Eastern studios so much better than Western ones at making Souls likes? Okay, let's uh, tackle the first one first. So what's more important to me? Combat or exploration? Combat, hands down. I love exploration. I love getting to see the story, the NPCs, all of the surroundings. I love getting to explore in a game, but when it comes to a souls or souls like combat is the essence of what makes all of the boss battles what makes your interaction with common enemies everything you can have really like a, a great building system for like a quality build mage strength all of that you can have a great time building some of those things but fundamentally if it has good combat and it carries the structure of what the uh of what the player's character is doing and then some, then that's everything. And the last part of the question is, why are Eastern studios so much better than Western ones at making Souls likes? I don't think one is better than the other. I think they're both just different in the way that they approach them and that's completely fine. But you guys, that was it for today's q and I love the questions that you guys sent to me. Thank you all so much. Everyone from Blue Sky sending them over and everyone from my community page on YouTube sending them over. If you want more videos like these in the future, please leave a comment down below letting me know. If you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. May you find your worth in the waking world, your hunter. Stay casually nerdy and I will see you all in the next video. Umbasa.